Okay, what we must teach our daughters. Video number three, audio number three. Discussion number five, and I don't know how much we're going to get done in this chapter. We're going to look at marriage. We've already seen the introduction. God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Savior. We've looked at nakedness. We looked at clothes that cover the nakedness, yet some clothes don't cover all the nakedness. And we talked about if our daughters are violated, what we need to do. We step into marriage. Our teenage daughters may one day want to get married. And according to the Bible, that girl that is your daughter that is under your roof is under your control as you being the father. When you send that child out to be a wife, the responsibility is on the father. Now, if there's the elopement, there's rebellion, and that's the daughter's fault. We're going to look at the principle of marriage according to Paul. And we're going to read some things here that many will not be able to digest. It will be maybe hard to swallow. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, the Corinthians. They are a carnal group of people. And yet less carnal as a lad to see in church age. That is allowing in the churches sodomite marriages. The blessing of your pets. The bazaars. I don't think the Corinthian church got that bad. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 on marriage, what we need to prepare our daughters. I said prepare. Teach and prepare. Because we're going to move into things about our daughters according to the Bible, but marriage. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, so the Corinthian church wrote to Paul. We don't have those letters. But that's not our discussion. They wrote Paul and said, hey, we got a question. We got a question about marriage. We got a question about dating. Paul says, I read your letter. And what is his first response? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. He doesn't say husband. He doesn't say wife. Paul, according to the Bible, father, Christian. No man has the right, according to Paul, to touch a woman. I didn't say that. Now, I'm not one of these people, you know, if Paul says it, my darn, nothing but Paul. I'm not one of them. I'm 66 books. Paul writes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he writes by his own inspiration. And when he does so, he tells us in the passage. And he tells us, okay, I'm back to the Holy Spirit now. Paul's that honest. And he opens up a letter about dating and marriage, and Paul says, not to touch a woman. I'm going to set some rules in my house. I advise you to do the same. But we'll move on. We're not there yet. Nevertheless, nevertheless, touching a man or woman to avoid fornication, premarital sex is what they call it. Having sex before your marriage is called fornication. Let every man have his own wife, not plural wife that throws the morons out it says let every man have his own wife not man two 
verses. And America is in contradiction of the Bible already. I've seen boyfriend and, and girlfriends hugging and lavishing over each other. Saved or lost, I don't know, but Paul says no. Fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Singular. So, my decree, and I think it should be your decree. Again, I apologize with these notes. These are directed to my daughter. These are being done twice. These are doing for your ability to, to raise your children right in the Lord. And I'm having with my own family, with my own daughter. These notes are between me and my daughter. If Paul said, I hope this, doesn't, this study doesn't go for weeks and weeks. This is a long chapter. Paul said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Kissing. Don't the lips touch? Hugging. Isn't that the body touching? So, what don't we understand about no touching and kissing and hugging? No touching, no touch. Tonight, when we do this with my daughter, Lord willing, I'm going to sit around and ruin this house. I'm the father. I'm the husband. God has set me in charge of this house. My daughter will never hug or kiss a person, a boyfriend, until the preacher says, now you may kiss the bride. That's what Paul said. I'm going to do what the Bible says. You call me wherever you want. Make Victoria, you call me what? You know, how crew and all that. If I say no hugging, no kissing, my daughter ain't going to come home one day and say, Mom, I'm pregnant. Because in order to get pregnant, you got to touch. In order to get that way of touching, it starts off with hugging, it starts off with kissing, it starts off with holding hands. That leads to the other touching of flesh joining flesh. Now, any man who cannot submit to your decree of your teenage daughter, you lay the ground rules for your daughter. These are the rules of my daughter. Let's say she has to be in the house by 10 o'clock. 10.05 she comes home because he's late. Listen, if he will not if he will not adhere to the father's rules set for his daughter, he will not submit to God the Father. Bringing the girl five minutes late is disobeying. As Eve and Adam disobeyed God when God said, don't eat that fruit. I don't care if they nibbled the fruit. They ate it. If he cannot obey the father of his girlfriend, he cannot be trusted <coughs> excuse me, as a husband. Rebellion. He cannot be trusted as a parent. Disobedient. And he cannot be trusted as an employee. Untrustworthy. If he won't listen to a to an adult, to a parent that's not his parent. You think he listens to his parents? You think he's going to listen to the Bible? When Paul said in the Bible, no touch it, and he starts Googling over your daughter, bye. And if your pastor or anybody in the church gets upset, 1 Corinthians 7 1, I concern the things wherein you wrote to me, and good for a man not to touch a woman. That's Bible. That's Bible. Oh, you're so, yeah, I'm so. 7-2, nevertheless. That means that is. 
Webster's 1828 Dictionary. That is, to avoid fornication, kissing, hugging, and or touching can be an invitation to fornicate, to sin. You start touching and then you start petting. You start hugging and then you start grabbing other areas where you're not supposed to. It's not yours. Dad, you need to realize that daughter of yours, her body is your body in your house. Now, you have no right to touch her body. We talked about that with nakedness. We talked about that with dressing. As much as that body is not yours for touch, it is no property for anybody who's not her husband to touch. You need to let that guy know who's going to start dating your daughter hands off. Or take a hike. That's Bible. I'm reading you Bible. Not to touch a woman avoids fornication. That's what Paul said. We, <coughs> we're two verses in this chapter. All right, we got a problem with the world and worldly Christians. I'm a man. My sins are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you that. I'm speaking by poor example. Okay? We're all sinners. I don't want my daughter to have the regrets that I have, the regrets of my life. How to avoid fornication. Three simple, three simple steps of how to avoid fornication. Number one, 1995 said to me, a man gets a wife. Ooh. Ah. Uh, number two, woman gets a husband. Ooh. Number three, marriage discontinues fornication. Wow. How hard was that? How do we stop teenage pregnancies? Don't give them condoms. Don't give them IC, whatever that thing is. Oh, I don't know. What. Tell them to get a marriage license. That's God honorable. The world's way of doing it, you got children today with fatherless. You couldn't pick the father out in a lineup. It's bad that I've seen waiting for my prescriptions at the pharmacy I go to that they got a box there in the public grocery store that you can buy a kit for DNA to find out that's, that's ridiculous. Hebrews 13.4. We'll take a little break here. Hebrews 13.4. We'll be back. James. Hebrews 13.4. Let's see what God has to say about this. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established, the Bible said. Marriage is honorable. Now remember that, because we're going to talk about honor thy mother and father. It's going, to, it's going to be removed. But marriage is honorable. That's what God said. In all, from I do to burying in a grave or death if there's no grave in all the bed undefiled we'll get into that for whoremongers buying it selling it and adulterers stepping outside your marriage God will judge we'll talk about that not, not, but God says to avoid fornication, get a wife. God says avoid fornication, get a husband. And there are three classifications. Fornication, adultery, and the marriage bed. Two are sins. Two are promoted on television and the movie. He says, 
and it, this is your weak heart turn off now nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife let every woman have her own husband possession her own his own not someone else's wife you become property to the husband husband you become property to your wife you become one the Bible says premarital sex is fornication you don't belong to that person yet and that person does not belong to you touch could be an act of fornication Matthew 5 28 he just touches and he gets his thought Matthew 5 28 we talked about that enough now what are the verbs I'm going to give you some verses here, and I'm going to trust you to go look. If you really want to do right, I'm going to let you do some looking. But verbs. Number one is seeing. Lust of the eye. Number two is touching. The lust of the flesh. And number three is the act. 1 John 2.16. So you see... I see that woman. Oh, <laughs> and if I touch that woman, I've got an act of fornication or adultery about to happen. That's a sin. That's used by Satan. Genesis 3 6. The woman saw that scene. She took the fruit. That's touching. And did eat. That's the sin. That's the action. All right, let's get more. Second Samuel eleven two and three. Saw a woman. Seeing. He took her. Touching. Came in unto him. Adultery. That's David. Take a little walk. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, nice centerfold. Ooh, ooh, go get her. Would Eve and, and David know what would have happened just by ooh, ooh? That looks good. Let me go www.bashiva washing herself. Let's see. Let's look what it looks like. That's the trouble with the internet. Movies, pictures, magazines, books. Might I be incorrect what I just gave you? Absolutely not. To avoid fornication, no touching. Wedding ring, marriage. It is not good for a man not to touch a woman. Some men can touch and have no desire to sin. I wouldn't trust David. If David came to my house right now, King David, you ain't being left alone with my daughter. Absolutely not. You're the king of Israel. You're a type of Jesus Christ, but you ain't being alone with my daughter. It's too late when he's in the mood and you're unclothed. Kind of hard to stop something that is rolling down the hill at full speed, isn't it? Oh, you know, it, it, nothing's going to happen. Some men, most, can touch and leave the sin. Do you really know that person that you, you're going to experiment? You don't really know that person. He'll say anything. He'll deceive you in any way, as a serpent does. And that guy is already disobeying the command of the parents. He's already after the works of Satan and not God. So which is better the two? <coughs> no touching. That's the better. That's a rule we need to set for our daughters. No touching. Hands off. Signs in stores, museum, and other places. There's a sign that says do not touch. Fathers, let's put that sign on our teenage daughters. Hands off. No touching. 
You ain't even going to hold my daughter's hand to the day I walk her down the aisle and I put her hand in yours. If you can't obey me for however time you court, you ain't going to obey God in your lifetime. You can't be trusted with my daughter. That's my rules. I said in the beginning, if my daughter wants to step out, go on her own, and that's, that's her. But she wants to do right and live in my house and obey my rules. That's the rule now. This takes a lot of prayer, fathers. This takes a lot of earnest with the Lord. So my rule, I hope it would be your rule at least, no kissing, no hugging, no touching, no unwanted teenage pregnancy. You know, you can't eat a candy bar if you don't open the wrapper. Leave the wrapper on your daughter. Seven three. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise the wife unto the husband. Now we are preparing our daughters for marriage. And what we need to start with marriage is she needs to know what marriage is. It's not like the TV show. It's not, oh, the little boy burns the house down, next episode, everything's fine and hunky-dory. It's not like that. Sometimes when you go to bed, you turn off the lights, and you wake up in the morning, the same problem, if not worse, is there. We've got to get our daughter's marriage view of Hollywood and television out of their heads and in reality. All right, the husband first. The husband render unto the wife due benevolence. To do good, goodwill, kindness, charitableness, desire to promote their happiness. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. To promote their happiness. So we must teach our daughters, when they look for a man, Mr. Prince Charming, Prince Charming has to look at his princess and say, I'm going to do you good, goodwill, kindness, charitable, desire to promote their happy, your happiness over my happiness. That means the manly toys go out the window to help support the family he's going to. That means he puts the booze, the cigarettes, and the drugs away. Because they're not good for the woman. You shouldn't be doing those things anyway. Fathers, you ought not allow it. The husband's job is to make his wife happy. You got a daughter that comes home dating somebody and she's not, she's not happy. There's trouble. On to the wife. No other females gets his attention but her. So when your daughter is courting, you keep your eye on that guy. If his eyes or his his attention goes elsewhere to other females, it's warning. He says, "Do." Paul says do, D-U-E. Your wife is owed goodwill, kindness, charity, charitability. She's owed that. That's what the Bible says. If a man pays his bills, that's good. But if he's indebted to his wife, in the eyes of God, that's incomplete. That would stop a lot of broken marriages, husbands. That will prevent that will prevent broken marriages, dads. If we watch that guy, she's she's court and look for the warning signs. The husband we need to teach our daughters must give her her due and nothing less. 
Now, to our daughters who will be a wife, it says the same thing that the husband. The same words. But it says likewise. It doesn't say do, but it's implied. Unto husband and no other males. Like the man. Husband and wife. Him, no other females. Her, no other males. That includes children and in-laws. The Bible structure we're going to look at in Ephesians is God the Father, God the Son, the husband, the wife, then the children, then the employer. God has set an order for the marriage. Verse 4, the wife has not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. Well, look at that. I'll give you a perfect illustration for myself. i got a beard and a mustache. I have been so tempted to get rid of the mustache like the Amish have it. But, but, does the Bible say I can't do that? No, it don't. My wife said no. <gasps> you let you know. See, this is her body too. Why would I do something purposely to upset her? And let her be in disgust. Now, whatever reason, if it actually burn or whatever, something happened, okay, then, you know, that's, but if your husband tells the wife, that hairdo's got to go. That hairdo's got to go. I don't care if you like it, I don't care if you pay $200 for it. Dear, those jeans, are, they look like they've been through five real wars. Remove them. Those jeans go out the window. Into the garbage. And in most cases, each other, you try to look, make the other person not look like an idiot out in public. Husbands need a lot of help with that. We got people today who got, they need a woman to say, pull your pants up. You look like an idiot. But no one takes care of them. I mean, if, if I was somewhere in a restaurant with my wife and all, and she's got a piece of spaghetti hanging from her. And I said, honey, you got spaghetti. Leave me alone. You're not going to tell me what to okay, find. You look like an idiot. See, it's for each other's welfare. Oh, can't say that word. So, I must teach my daughter, is she willing to submit to that guy and what he feels and how he feels? I'm a man. Ooh, here we go. The more you get this, the more you're going to hate me. Absolutely no cosmetics. Number one, don't paint yourself up for me. I love you the way you are. Number two, it stinks. Number three, I said so. Now, if the man you're going to marry for your daughter, he turns and says, listen, I don't want you to wear high heels. Now, you, daughter, if you can't get that rule, don't marry the guy over high heels. Yes, because it would be rebellion. Now, if there's particularly something about a man that our daughter wants, and it's not out of the question. It's not. And he won't submit to that. We've only got four verses in this chapter. And we're 30 minutes into this thing. This is going to take a while. The question we must set to our daughters. When it comes to her body. Will she submit? Now husbands you're to prepare your daughters already. You say, what do you mean? 
You've already set rules for your daughter, I hope. I hope you have rules about clothing, hair, jewelry, whatever it has to be that you need to put that stuff underneath your underarms. I know you're a girl, but you still need it. And if you set rules for your daughter and she obeys it, you are training her for a husband. So when he has his rules, and the only thing she's going to have to transfer, transfer herself in from, from being a, a child to a wife is, okay, what are the rules here that were the rules over here? See, fathers, we set rules in our house so our daughters will be in obedience to God and to authority. Husband's authority. Don't you send your daughter to a man that your daughter is rebellious and cocky and everything else like that. Don't you give that guy a headache. Marriage. The power of the husband over the wife is he tells her. And it's not going to be for, oh, I'm not making No, it's not going to be like that. It's, it would be, if you found the right man for your daughter, it will be love. I want you to be chaste. I want you to be pure. I want you to be modest. And then for the wife over the husband, she tells him, I want you to be a gentleman. You, you're, you're, what did I do? Marry an ape? Once a woman marries a husband, she starts to say, maybe evolution is true. That guy, everywhere it goes, his hair, is his clothes, I mean, trying to help you out. The main subject is intercourse, sexual relations, believe it or not. So if the, we've been touching, we've been talking about touching fornication in the body. There may be of the marriage bed some things your husband wants and some things your wife wants. Now there's limitations for the women according to the law. Certain times. And you got to understand with, with something like that is there may be, there, there, maybe there's pain, maybe they're just not feeling well. You got to put some exceptions into the rule. But we've been talking about sex. We've been talking about possession. You don't have someone take your daughter in marriage and then he just goes off with his own little life and lets her, you know, he's a, she's just a graduated mother to him. That's wrong. So we need to teach our daughters when searching for a husband to consider how will he treat her? And she needs to realize that men in relationships will change over time. Life is not Disneyland. Troubles will arrive. Problems will come. He will get upset. She will get upset. After the upsetting, what's the marriage bond? How strong is it? Those troubles and problems are supposed to build it stronger. And I need to make this statement. If I'm not going to close now, but if I were to close, I close right now. Four verses. We need to teach our daughters that she's not going to change that man after marriage. Well, if I marry Prince Charming, and he'll make him so much better. Then he'll go to church, and then he'll serve. The no, you won't. God had to use a donkey, a talking ass, to talk to a man to get things straight. So a man is worse than an ass when it comes to stubborn. We need to teach our daughters that if she thinks that that guy is going to get hunky-dory and better after marriage, we need to put the light onto her that it's not going to happen. Marriage will not make him right. That is important. Now, I've heard that. I don't know anybody who's, who's ever fallen into that character. I, through messages and preaching, the preachers, I've, I've heard that example, so it needs to get out there. 
Somebody has thought that if I marry this person, they'll get better. No, evolution is wrong. Things get worse. It's the lowest common denominator. Usually, if you marry someone who's worse, you're going to get worse. And he just may not let you go to church. He may not let you read the Bible. What are you going to do then? Obedience. It's not just to God, but to the spouse. The wife's position is under the husband, and the husband is under Jesus Christ. So before our daughters get married to a man, she needs to understand all the requests that he will have for her. We need to know what he expects from our daughters before marriage. That means we're going to have to sit down and talk with the guy. Again, sacrifice of our time. We got to meet what his demands are. And he's going to have to sit and talk about what her demands are. We got to find out is he a sheep or is he a wolf? Is that what the Bible teaches? Aren't we supposed to look out for deceivers? Oh, yeah, we look out for Christians in the church. Why not our families? Second John says, don't even let them in our house. That guy is a deceitful. He just wants your daughter for pleasure. Does not belong in our house. Second John. It's not about you. We need to teach our daughter. It's about the other. Render to the other benevolence. If our daughters are going to get married because me, myself, and I, we need to prevent it. We need to protect that guy. If that guy is out for me, myself, and I, we need to protect our daughters. If any one of them is selfish, that's it. Draw the line. Close. This is not a marriage that's going to work. Verse 5. Oh. It's, it's kind of a weird spot to end. I, I mean, look. I may have time. We'll see what we can do. 7 5. Defraud ye, husband and wife, not one the other. Talking about sexual relations, sexual words, touching, fornication. As said to be for consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. Incontinent is the want of restraint or passion or appetite. The want of restraint of sexual appetite. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Exodus 19.15, God told him, said, listen, refrain from your wives before you come to me. No marriage bed. Wait. For a time. We need to teach our daughters. Because this is a very important verse. Look who's in the verse besides the husband and wife. Satan. Hopefully, your daughter is saved, Christian, wants to serve the Lord. Hopefully, she'll find the same kind of guy. Your husband, your daughter and her husband may one day say, you know what? Let's fast in prayer. Let's separate ourselves from the marriage bed for a prayer, for, for something. We want to seek the Lord, and not only food and drink, but the marriage bed. There's nothing wrong with that. But Paul gives a warning. Defraud not one another. Withholding sex from your spouse is immortal and to sin. 
the, the Blessed Virgin Mary, if that is so, she's the biggest sinner ever in the world, Roman Catholic. Because she can't have a husband, Joseph, if she didn't have no intercourse. Because intercourse in the Bible, flesh joining flesh, is marriage. And she can't have other children unless she had intercourse. And it better been with Joseph. We know it was with Joseph. Oh, she'd been an adulterer. It is wrong. We need to teach our daughters. And I know a couple who like this their entire. You cannot refrain sex from your partner. Now, physical condition, pain, there's limitations health okay but just to refrain to refrain because it's dirty or rock no because look who shows up satan look what he does tempt you Con consent is when you come together and decide you know what for prayer for purity no marriage bed you have to set a time paul says and when the time is up come together husband and wife and to realize when you do say hey not only we're gonna fast food and water but we're also going to give up the marriage bed and when you decide that we're gonna live for the Lord we need to teach our daughters that Satan shows up and he's going to attempt. And what do you think he's going to attempt with? Adultery, Matthew 5, 28. Remember what he uses in, in 1 John? He's going to get the lust of the flesh. He's going to get the lust of the eyes. Don't, I don't know about the pride of life. Or, yeah, I think he could use the pride of life. Well, my wife won't give it to me. You look beautiful. Come to me. You see what Paul's writing about the marriage bed? God honors it. Satan's there. Do you ever think about that, Dad? That Satan is in your bedroom with you and your wife checking out what you're doing. It's what the Bible says. Satan will do all he can, including the marriage bed, to ruin your marriage. And ruin your fellowship and testimony to God. That's what the Bible says. I mean, that's only five verses. We're going to get to the structure of marriage. What to look out for. What the warnings are. What we need to be aware for for our daughters. The example that we need to set our daughters as. Not just to worry about the man, but we need to, this girl that we raise, we need to raise right for him. Let us not give him a headache, trouble. Let's give him a holy, pure woman of God to be a help me to him. Let's never give our future sons-in-laws, let's, let's never give them a Jezebel. 